They won't see me coming.
What happened? That's four reports of avalanches in the mountains now. The Tearsmen can barely count past nine. They have neither the capacity nor the cause to close off the mountain passes. Either way, that leaves the second and fourth cohort trapped outside the valley. Or it's the work of your perfidious Earthshakers. Only a fool would not suspect a traitorous Archon of poisoning the mind of his students with sedition. We would have killed the Earthshakers Guild for their master's treachery. But I'm sure you have some perfectly valid reason for allowing them to live as your pawns. Hey, watch yourself. When these two get going, you don't want to get between them. I always know you've run out of things to say when you resort to mocking my vassals. If we are to speak of treachery, why is it that my scouts see the Scarlet Chorus warriors defecting back to the Vendrian Guard? Your fearsome reputation has gone flaccid, for it seems you cannot control your soldiers, or perhaps you simply choose not to. Speaking of strategic failures, who was it that insisted the valley would need only a token garrison? Hmm? For some strange reason, we can't seem to recall which balding half would grossly underestimated the enemy. Thoughts? And I thought you had left agents within these tearsmen when they surrendered. Either you failed to see this coming, or you knew and let it happen. Incompetent or in cahoots, either way, this mess has your filthy stink all over it. We look forward to seeing you explain to Tunan why the Archon of War could not close the vice on this trivial little insurgency. When we are crowned the ruler of the tears, we shall have this place renamed to Ashes Folly in your honor. If I could trust the information I get from you and your conscripted mouth breathers, perhaps I'd order my cohorts around a bit more aggressively. But last time I trusted your all clear report, my troops failed to come home. Oh, Ash, old boy. If you're going to have a little sob every time one of your nieces or nephews dies to the tearsmen, perhaps we should have Siren sing you some calming lullabies to help you cope with your grief.
Did I give you permission to speak? Stormcaller, it is an honor to have you with us. I would imagine you are here with another of Kairos's edicts. Perhaps another catastrophe that will punish our foes for hiding behind their walls? My soldiers tell me you helped Commander Drottus on your way through Edring. You honor the court with your selfless cooperation, for that is the sort of camaraderie that Kairos demands of us all. For the second time, Brother Tunon selects you for the glory of proclamation. You should be honored. Tell us, what has the Overlord decided to unleash upon the Oathbreakers? The Overlord means to compel us into action. No doubt the avalanches in the mountains are part of this ultimatum. We must conquer the Oathbreakers or die in failure. There is no room for error, and no other way out of this valley alive. We'll need to advance across the Matani. We lose everything if we stand still. And we move to back up Plan Green. The Earthshakers didn't make it over the mountain in time. So we do this the hard way over the walls instead of through. So you found your backbone at last! <laughs> oh, we were worried past humiliations would make you soft, timid. That was a record for you, right? The Baker's Dozen lost in one sortie. If you had waited for the chorus reinforcements, maybe we'd have eyes and ears on the matter. I second the fate binder. Thought you had the memories of one of those oath breakers rattling about that bronze gourd of yours. Would Kairos's mighty spy master please enlighten this gathering of allies with some scrap of strategic insight? Cowards! 
If I were still alive, I'd freeze the blood as it runs in your veins. You may take the river, but you'll pay for it with your lives. Our sources tell us the Oathbreakers had some sort of magical trick in store. But this knowledge is tinged with fear, trepidation. If we make a move for the Matani, we suspect the Oathbreakers will mount a counterattack that is equal parts valiant and futile. Yes, and that old codger put up quite a fight on the way out. Almost turned himself into a puddle to escape our interrogations. He's not the last of the Tidecasters, though. At the time of his death, there was another. A woman named Ebb. We believe she is one of the mages assisting these Oathbreakers. Our soldiers clamor for battle, and at last we shall have it. Verse, we command you to continue guarding the Fate Binder. Tunan's Chosen is our honored guest, and must be shown our finest hospitality. I won't let you down, boss. He'll get through the campaign in one piece, as long as he doesn't do anything too stupid. Finally, the fool and his puppet are gone. Perhaps now I can hear myself think. Rarely do I question Kairos' judgment. But I will never understand why the voices of Narat is given such authority. I shudder to think what will become of us all should Tunon favor him in the end. Though the edict threatens the Scarlet Chorus just as it threatens us, I cannot shake the feeling that our allies will work against us. You've shown your worth in war, and your name has been known to the Legion since the very beginning of this long conquest. So I'd ask that you join us this one last time to help us wrap up this last objective. If you wish to be counted amongst the Glorious, speak with the Iron Marshal. She will direct the order of battle until we are ready for the final push into the Citadel. <laughs> 